Now, because I am not nearly as cruel as my fellow colleagues on the day shift, your blankets will be returned to y'all and your dresses will be repaired. However, should you feel the need to defecate or urinate, please feel free to do so in the fine buckets provided by your correctional staff. That'd be us. Thank you. Guys, seriously? You, you, you don't know. I gotta go. I, to a doctor. Anything. I don't know. I'm fucked up. I feel so fucked up inside. I mean, God, I mean, Jesus Christ, I'm burning up inside. Don't you know? Please, 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 let me out of here. I want out. The Stanford Prison Experiment reenacts the true story of a study on the effects of imprisonment conducted by Dr. Philip Zimbardo at Stanford University in 1971. The study was halted because of the disturbing behavior exhibited by many of the student volunteers in the experiment. The movie opens with male students auditioning to take part in the experiment. One of the most chilling aspects of this film is the fact that all the participants start the process as seemingly good-natured young men. But in spite of their education and seemingly well-adjusted temperaments, they change drastically when divided into two groups of guards and prisoners. Zero, nine, three. Five, four, eight, six. Four, three, two, five. I want it fast, I want it loud, and I want it clear. Five seven zero four three four zero one seven two five eight eight one nine one zero three seven eight six one two zero nine three five four eight six. In order to establish their authority over the prisoners, the guards start subjecting them to increasingly more humiliating and arbitrary punishments. We see a stunning transformation. Initially, good-humored young people turn ruthless simply because of the roles in which they are placed. Though violence is strictly forbidden in the study, the guards certainly express Don't violent you. tendencies that quite obviously would translate into violent actions in the real world. I couldn't tell you. The extent to which the prison dynamic corrupts the guards shocks both the prisoners and Dr. Zimbardo himself. The guards clearly no longer regard the prisoners as humans worthy of respect and dignified treatment, even though the prisoners are innocent volunteers. As viewers, we learn that average, normal college students are easily corruptible. Okay. We also learn that simply being placed in a position of complete control over other human beings can change a person's personality and behavior in fundamental and frightening ways. Just keep your hands on the wall. Um, Jesse, wait. Hey, where are you going? You know what? It was an experiment, and I went along with it, but I really hate myself right now. You did nothing wrong. That was... Just protocol. Protocol. Back in that room, I became everything I've hated for so long. And I let it happen. And I enjoyed it. You can't possibly understand how it makes me feel. Hey. In this way, the Stanford Prison Experiment offers a clue into a deeply corrupting dynamic that is unleashed when a society allows incarceration uh, to become an excuse for cruel and unusual punishment, um, such as torture. Allowing or encouraging law enforcement or military personnel to torture captives, no matter what the alleged justification, takes the dark and corrupting dynamic uh, really? that we see in this film Maybe to a level that is deeply pressure. destructive. Some forces in our society embrace torture as a way to allegedly enhance punishment and obtain information and cooperation from prisoners. But it's a fundamental human rights violation that corrupts individuals, institutions, and societies that engage in it. So listening to such voices destroys rather than furthers the rule of law. No society that claims to value human rights can officially adopt a policy of violating human rights in the alleged defense of democracy and freedom. We cannot seek to discover information and punish people for their crimes by becoming violators of human rights ourselves. If we want to maintain a clear line between right and wrong, 
between the abusers and defenders of human rights, then we need to steer clear of endorsing practices that are a grotesque assault on human dignity. It's easy for you to say, oh, I wouldn't have acted that way. But you don't know. That's, that's the truth, you don't know. And now I, I know what I'm capable of, and it hurts. That, I don't know, I don't know how else to say it, but it, it does hurt me to know that.